Hey guys, welcome to another video from the Parrot Bros. Now today we are going to hunk down that infamous leak. Now I definitely, definitely, definitely have a leak, but I can't find it. There's no obvious slits in the pipe, no obvious damage, nothing's obviously hanging off, which means we need to use other means. Now, today we are going to be using an air compressor to find that leak, and I'm going to show you what you need and how to do it straight after the intro. So you've got a boost leak or you think you might have a boost leak, this is why you're watching this video, that or you just love watching me. Either way, we're going to get into it now. So um, you're going to need a compressor. It needs to be a compressor. It can't be like a little battery tire pump or something like that. It needs to be able to flow um, a decent amount of cubic feet of air per minute. So you want to be able to fill the system up quick. Um, if, you, if it's a slow one, it won't build up enough pressure. If it's got a leak, it'll just be leaking out and you won't be able to find it. So you need to be able to put a reasonable amount of air in at once. Now, I'll quickly show you my setup. Um, so I've got the compressor plugged in. This is out of the shed. Um, I just pinched it. So what I've actually got is I've got it set to just over 20 PSI. Now, if you know your TTs, um, if they're mapped, they're about 21 PSI ish when they're mapped if they're stock they're about 15 but 20 they can handle 20 without blowing anything up so um, you've got your compressor set low mainly for as a fail safe because if you have it say set to 80 or 100 and you get a bit carried away on the trigger and you're not looking you could quite easily break some stuff so <laughs> you don't want to over pressurize the system i've got a normal um tire pressure gauge one which is just connected to a normal tire valve um, now I've had 3D printed by one of my subscribers, Dave, top banana. Um, he's 3D printed me this 80 mil bung, which goes in there. Um, if he's happy to make some more, if he's got a file, I can share that with you guys. And it's just got a metal tire valve in. Um, he actually sent me this quite a long time ago. I've just not had the time to do it um, or the car or the problems. But, um, and the only other thing you need to do is this is the puck which comes off of the turbo intake pipe, same pipe that you're attached to and you need to put a bung on it. Now, the reason you do this, you don't have to put it on there, you can put it onto this pipe here, it doesn't really matter. But basically, we don't want to be over-pressurizing the rocker cover and blow the gasket. That's the risk. It may not happen, but by doing this, we are taking it out of the equation and we're not gonna over-pressurize that because the last thing we wanna do is cause more problems. So, what I have done is I've removed the air box, as you can see on the floor there. So the air box has been removed and then we've put this bung into there now like i said before this comes off of the turbo intake pipe it's the puck and then it goes into there now i've just put um, a bung on the end just to stop that um, and that is pretty much all we do i've unplugged the the math because i've left it plugged into the air box because it's just easier um, <laughs> okay so now you've got you're in a position where you've got your air box removed your math removed You've got this plugged in nice and tight. Don't go mad because it's quite easy to over tighten these. I have ever so slightly, but not enough to damage it. And then we've blocked off this pipe that comes off so we don't over pressurize the crankcase. Then we're ready to pump it on. Now, um, if you, everyone's ever pumped up any tires other than car tires, you'll know that sometimes these are a bit of a sod to get on without leaking. Oh, we're good. Okay, so now we're in a position. Let me just go and turn this compressor off because I know it's going to suddenly jump into life the moment we start using it. And all we're doing, because we've already got it set to 20 PSI, we know that I can basically hold that trigger down and it won't over pressurize the system. So we can't damage it any further than it already is, which is, for me, it's nice to know because it's quite easy to do more damage whilst trying to find a fault. So what we'll do is we'll start by just pumping this up. You'll see this go up to 20. And when you let go, it should, should stay at 20. Now it's not. Now, what I'll do is I'll take my microphone off and I will offer it around different places in the car. Let me get you set up. Can I get you set up somewhere so you can see what I'm doing? Not really. Everything's so shiny. Okay, so let's have another go. So let me take my microphone off. And what I'll do is I'll walk it around the car, things where it might be leaking. Right, I can hear air. Now I have a hunch as to what it might be because this is the first time i'm doing it so i don't actually know um but there's the brake pedal when you turn the car off 
the brake pedal goes hard almost instantly, which means there is a leak likely to be near the servo. So the vacuum pressure that goes to the servo is vanishing, which means it's more than likely either a pipe up here or a pipe underneath the inlet manifold. So that is where the sound's coming from, because I can hear it in my left ear. Try not to get your beard caught in the bonnet catch. So let's hear that again. Right, so. Right, so that's definitely coming from the side here. What I'll do is if we wiggle the pipe a little bit, this is always usually a giveaway. Yep, yeah, hear that? So we've isolated the problem to this side. Now let's, let me put my mic back on and I'll see if we can see the issue. Um, usually this doesn't, it's not normally too bad. Sometimes this pipe fails on the outer edge. So it's, it's coming from somewhere around here. Now, sometimes this three-way pipe can split. Just pressure it up again. Right, so I can hear air, but I can't see it, which is always fun. Ah, okay, so I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that, and this is filthy dirty, but basically there's a split coming on that bottom one. Okay, so we found the issue. It's definitely that bottom pipe. And it's just got a split and you can't unfortunately you can't see it because the camera's not very good but it's just it's just letting air out um so that's that's how you would find a a boost leak with a compressor excuse my hair it's terrible i mean forehead i'm covered in dirty fingers um <laughs> this is why you don't have long hair when it's windy um but yeah basically that's how you find a boost leak the i would say the easy way because it's easy enough to listen for air it helps if it's quiet um, the, uh, the benefit of smoke is you can, it gives you visually, but if your hearing's all right and you don't want to buy a smoke machine or you don't know anyone with a smoke machine, then that is definitely the best option. So what we need to do is I need to get a new T piece or a new three, three way piece here. Um, and then we'll carry on with the fault finding, see if there's any more leaks. Um, but besides that, that is definitely where the bulk of the air is coming from. And it would explain, um, the brake issue as well. Um, so like I said before, simple, simple, simple. Remove the air box and MAF. Fit the 80 mil. This is if you have a 225. If you have a 180, it's 70 mil. 80 mil on a 225, fit the 80 mil bung. Let me just show you what it looks like. Because it'd be more beneficial if you see it, I think. Okay, so this is the bung. Um, and all that is, is that fits, that's the 80 mil part. And that fits just nicely inside there, like so. It's a bit of a snug fit. Um, but yeah, you can imagine it goes into there and that's what holds the pressure. And then you can put the pressure up and it should hold. Uh, if it doesn't hold, you've got a leak from somewhere. If you are struggling to find the leak because it's only weeping out and let's say over a minute or two, you're dropping to nothing, get some fairy liquid or something like that with water, something that's gonna bubble up and just spray it on joints where you think there might be an issue or run your fingers over things and just, just sort of flex the pipe a little bit. Just flex it round the joints and just see if it makes any difference to noise because if there's a problem and you go tss, 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 then it's really easy to find because air will come flying out much like I did with, with this one down here. Just by tweaking the bottom of it, it opened it up and allowed all the air to escape. So real simple for fault finding, um, especially because boost leaks and vacuum leaks are so so common on these things because i mean let's be honest it's 20 something years old let's say for instance this pipe here this is a prime example right if you squeeze this that should automatically come back <laughs> and it doesn't so that is definitely on its way out i mean like you can reshape it and it pretty much stays there you have to sort of squeeze it back in the shape so this pipe could definitely do with replacing and obviously over time give it another year or two and that could fail inside and it will start to tear same as these ones these are really common for this one isn't too bad but going all soft and perished because it's obviously they get damaged by the oil um, and can cause issues. Same as things like this. I mean, you could quite easily chafe or it could just slip off. It could be any number of things. It could be a failure. It could be just that it's slipping off or anything like that. Excuse my hair, I should have worn a hat really, shouldn't I? Um, but that is, is fault finding a boost leak. Like I said, make sure you have a fail safe. Make sure you don't over pressurize the system. 15 to 20 PSI. Um, it runs on a, say, let's say for instance, 15 on a 180, 20 PSI on a 225, you'll be safe as sound as long as you follow what I've done here. Um, very simple to do. 
I will try and find a link to um, a little bung like this or a little aluminium one you can stick in here and also um, either a file for printing one of these or someone who will print them or where you can get one so that everyone can have a go. Um, but that I think is really, really important. If you think you have a leak, even, even be it a small one is enough to cause um, crap idle, revs holding high. So when you rev up, it takes ages to come back down again because it should be quite quick. Um, or obviously the more obvious one is when you nail it or floor it and you get this horrible then you know you've got a leak as well and obviously we want these to run forever and ever so i help i hope i hope that has been helpful um any questions down in the description don't forget to give this video a thumbs up it really helps me and the channel i really appreciate you guys watching and i'll see you on the next one bye for now bloody hair that's what you get for having that boy band look bye guys